Bonjour les amis. Bonjour. Welcome to the Loire Valley. On a glorious day. Though it's a little chilly. I am taking you to a special place today. And I hope you enjoy this uh, impromptu tour. I've been spending the day at this glorious place and I thought this is too good not to share with my online friends. Welcome to France with Vero. If you don't know me, I am a virtual tour guide based in the Loire Valley in France. You can find the replays of all my virtual tours in Paris and beyond Paris on YouTube, France with Vero. I'm showing you a meadow with some pretty incredible trees right now, but the best is yet to come. Some of you may have recognized this place where I'm standing now. We are in the Loire Valley. Bonjour, welcome. And in the park of one of the most renowned chateaux of this region, Azé le Rideau. The town itself is called Azé le Rideau, but this is the beautiful chateau. It's been here for 500 years, believe it or not. I'm just going to take a little stroll around this beautiful park so you can admire this architecture. and the landscaping. So for those of you who've never been to the Loire Valley, this is a region fairly central in France, south of Paris, not too far from Paris. And they say there are about 1,000 chateaus here, large and small, public and private. This one has belonged to the French state since 1905. But before that, it was the property of several families. And before that, and that is often the case in the Loire Valley and in the rest of France as well, before there was this beautiful chateau here, there was a medieval fortress a long time ago, built for defensive purposes. But then the 16th century rolled in, known as the Renaissance, the time known as the Renaissance, French kings, who went to Italy, fell in love with what they saw there, brought back artists, trends. And they started building these beautiful chateaus that were much more comfortable, much more comfortable than the old medieval fortresses. One of the reasons why was that they brought in a lot of light with these windows. The light is absolutely fantastic, you're right. It's about 3.30 p.m. here. It's pretty, pretty cold. Um, it's probably in the low 40s right now, but the sky, as you can see, is glorious. So this was a bit of an impromptu road trip I took today from my city in Tours. It's about 20, 25 minute ride to Azé. <coughs> Pardon, <laughs> to Azé. Oh, made me sneeze. And um, I thought I would show you this, at least the exterior. The chateau is wonderful to visit as well. They take you first uh, to the top, right under this big uh, rooftop you see here. You can still see the wood framing uh, that was done 500 years ago with oak trees from this area. And it still stands. It's still in impeccable shape right under this big uh, roof you see here. And then you work your way downstairs through several stairs, th several floors, and you see different rooms with beautiful furniture. And it kind of flows. This is a very nice chateau to visit because it's not very, it's not big. It's not overwhelming like a place like Chambord can be. It's also very, for me, this is really the Loire Valley. It's elegant. It's beautiful everything from the chateau to the grounds to the furniture inside shows excellent taste. You can see the Renaissance influence from the 16th century um, in this, um, on this beautiful facade made of the Tufo stone. 
this very soft stone that you see a lot in the Loire Valley, so light in color and easy to sculpt and scarve, which is how they could sculpt this facade. You can see above the windows, you can see, we'll get a little closer and you'll be able to see better how they were able to, to carve or to sculpt this uh, tufo or tuffa stone. The roof is of course slate, which is not uncommon in this area. When, when a massive restoration was done just a few years ago, it, it, I think it lasted three years at least, uh, they uh, couldn't find the original slate that had been used to build the first roof. So they had to go to Galicia in northern Spain to find it. I had no idea. I researched this and I saw that Galicia has a lot of uh, uh, slate quarries apparently. And this is where they got the slate that you see. And the roof is beautiful now. You can also see the pitch of the roof. It's very high, very tall. And everything is done so your eyes are drawn towards the sky. You see those sculptures on top of the windows. You see uh, the tall chimneys. You see those ornaments as well on all the roof lines. So everything is done so your eyes will just be drawn. You know, look up <laughs> is the message here. But the facade is beautiful. It's an L-shaped building and uh, we are going to walk around it so you can see better. So interestingly, it sits on an island, an island between two arms of a river, the Indre River, I-N-D-R-E, which is a tributary of the Loire, the big river in this area. And so those two arms form an island, and this is where the chateau is built. But you see how close the water gets to the chateau? So this was done in the 19th century so that um, so that when the wind isn't blowing, right now the wind is kind of blowing, so you see the water is not too still, but when it's very still, you have the reflection of the chateau in the water. So I don't know if some of you have been here before. This is one of the most renowned chateaus in the Loire Valley in terms of its architecture. It was also very well known through the centuries because of a collection um, several families owned this chateau, but uh, the family that owned it from the post, let's say after the French Revolution to the late 19th century, that family is the one who did a lot of work to the buildings and created this beautiful park in the English style, uh, English style gardens. Tall trees, you have sequoias, you have cedars, you have ginkgo bilobas, all the exotic trees that were very, very popular in the 19th century when those landscapers designed those parks. And so this family did a lot for the building, for the park. They also had a great collection early on of portraits of kings and queens and prominent people through the century. So the, the chateau, in fact, attracted people who were very interested in that collection. Unfortunately, the last, um, the last member of this family in the late 19th century, in the 1880s, lost a lot of his fortune and so a lot of the portraits were, were lost, but some are, are kept still in, inside the chateau and you can see them if you visit. You can almost see the reflection here. Isn't this beautiful? So it's a very romantic park in the English style, like I said, little bridges, small islands, magical setting. Now, I know a lot of people love Chenonceau. Chenonceau is another very famous chateau in the Loire Valley, and I do too, of course. It's hard not to love Chenonceau, but I would say Azé is probably my second favorite because of its size, because of its elegance. Now it's Christmas almost, the holidays are around the corner and so there's a festival happening in this area. So several of the chateaus will be decked out for the holidays, organizing special events. And when I visited the chateau this morning, they were setting up the Christmas decorations. So I'll be, um, I'll be sharing some pics, some photos later.
until the 1950s, there was actually a terrace out here and they removed it so the water would reach this entire side of the chateau, the southern side. So now it really looks like it is standing on the water in the middle of an island, doesn't it? It's, perf it's perfectly symmetrical, very balanced, very elegant. And because of the very, uh, the quite the recent restoration, uh, I believe from 2015 through 2017, then it looks, of course, immaculate. Can you hear the birds? Today I had a bit of an awakening when I arrived this morning around, it was, was almost noon actually when I arrived. Nobody was inside the chateau. I think there were two other people visiting with me and I saw the gardeners working. A lot of the businesses in town are closed and we're definitely off season now, but I realized how lucky I am to be now based in this. I mean, this is my backyard and I'm gonna be able to check out all these chateaus and places off season when no one else is around. And I think I just realized today <laughs> what a great opportunity that's going to be. We are on the western side now. You see this door over there? There used to be a, uh, there was a drawbridge there that would take you out and a covered gallery back in the Renaissance. And it would lead to a big garden so that doesn't exist anymore. You see it kind of stops there. The kitchen is nearby, but the water reaches the chateau now. So I think it kind of looks nice like that. Look how high the chimneys are. We'll walk around. I'll take you around to the front of the chateau and then uh, I'll wrap up and go on on another adventure for today, since there's still a little time. <laughs> That's right, I can pretend it's my chateau if no one else is around. Now, the, the way I came here was the same way I visited the cloister where I took you just a few days ago in my city and tour, Le Cloître de la Psalette. Uh, Aze, this chateau, is also part of the uh, network of the Centre des Monuments Nationaux. Here is the card. So this is a, an, a yearly pass that I get for 45 euros. And with this pass, I get to visit all the monuments that are owned and maintained by this branch of the French Ministry of Culture. In Paris, there are at least 20 of these monuments, including uh, the Arc de Triomphe, uh, the Conciergerie, the towers of Notre Dame and so forth. And in this area alone, there are about 15 or 20. So to me, this is the best pass. If you travel around France, and even if you stay in Paris, this is one of the best passes you can get because you save, the entrance fee today was about 13 euros. So I saved 13 euros and I just went in. I did the same at the cloister last week and I'll do the same at another spot where I'm headed soon. I don't know if the microphone is picking up the wind. That wind is just, it's very cold. So we're going to be standing now outside the chateau, right outside and in front of it, which is how people would have arrived at the time. So remember this was built at the very beginning of the 16th century by two, two gentlemen, one in particular who was a financier of the famous French king, Francis I. He uh, made a fortune by creating new taxes that made the king very rich. But uh, as is customary in these stories, it didn't end very well for him. He eventually had to run away, leave the chateau and his wife uh, because the king, uh, you know, suspected he was stealing money. The king was basically just jealous of what he built here. And then the, ch the chateau changed hands over the centuries. In the 17th century, a family owned it and designed the main entrance and I'll show you what they did in a second.
I'm glad you're enjoying this stroll. Thank you for joining me today. If you don't know me, my name is Véronique Véro. I'm a French native based in the Loire Valley. I'm a tour guide and a virtual tour guide <laughs> these days, which means I take you around Paris, around La Belle France, when I travel with me and I live stream. I lead uh, virtual tours on Facebook here or on uh, YouTube. All the replays are on my YouTube channel. Hours of virtual content. If you can't travel right now and miss France or would like to visit France one day, you can head over to Friends with Vero on YouTube and start traveling, my friends. And it's free. I moved out of Paris in May. All right, so in the 17th century, the Marquis who owned Aze designed this main alleyway lined with a very special type of oak trees. They are trained to grow very tall and straight like this. And the big gate you see, because he wanted a monumental entrance, just like they have in Versailles or in um, Vaux-le-Vicomte outside Paris. And so guests would arrive like this, and then they would come up here. He built some, there were those buildings on the side, and this is what they would see. Aze. A-Z-A-Y. Here is the main facade. So it's funny because it was sunny this morning when I arrived, but now the sun has turned, so it's in the dark on this side. It's an L-shaped uh, chateau. I'll show you in a second. This tower was added by the last family that owned it in the 19th century, and it kind of tied it all up together, I think. It is so big where I'm standing that I can't really film. My lens can't capture it all. So again, you're going above, right above the river, the Indre River, one of the two arms of the Indre. Here's the park where we started over there. If you just join, you can watch the replay later. And here is where guests would have arrived. Now, this is quite incredible. It, this is what the chateau is really famous for. This staircase here is called a loggia staircase. And this is pure 16th century, pure Renaissance. But there is a mix of styles here. The French uh, Gothic style, some of the Renaissance style that came from Italy. You can see really a mix. But this staircase is what the chateau is famous for. It's quite drafty in there. You can see the windows are wide open, right? It's called a loggia staircase. And again, the facade is made of that very soft stone, the tufo or tuffa. I think that's how it's pronounced in English, maybe. <laughs> now you can see the influence of the Renaissance for sure. You see those... Uh, windows, the way the panes are separated by stone. Look how beautiful this is. And again, the tufo is so soft that you can carve it very easily. So the facade is very richly decorated. This is where you would start your visit. And you'd be coming from there. The building on the right hand side next to the gate is where you go through show your ticket restroom is right next door to it and then you come up here and you start the visit look at this door anybody interested in beautiful doors i know many many people are out there So Louis XIII, King Louis XIII, stayed here. He stayed here, he spent a couple of nights here. Other famous people did, of course. And here is the loggia staircase I was telling you about. I'll try and step in in a second. Bonjour, friends, if you just joined, welcome. Thank you for the stars. I see you sending me some stars uh, in support. That's very nice of you, thank you. All my tours are tip-based. I have a virtual tip jar on PayPal. All that information will be in the video notes. You can also use stars. Thank you so much for that. Appreciate it. 
All right, so look at this. Do you see above this door? On the left, you have a salamander. On the right, you have an animal called an ermine. And the salamander was the symbol, the totem animal of the Renaissance King Francis I. And on the right-hand side is the ermine that was the symbol of his wife. Claude was her name. She happened to be the daughter of a uh, very well-known queen known as Anne of Brittany. And Anne of Brittany, her totem animal was the ermine, so her daughter, they did this because the chateau was built uh, by that financier who worked for Francis I right at the beginning of the uh, 16th century. And of course, it was changed over time. The original plans were modified. And then there was this big restoration uh, a few years ago. But the result is quite outstanding. And so as you go in, I'm not going to go in because I don't want to lose my signal. But uh, you can see how beautiful this is. Look at the ceilings. It's just a very elegant place and it's immaculate. It's not overwhelming. They give you an excellent brochure that's available in several languages and they tell you what to look at in, in most of the rooms. The rooms that you can actually visit, that is. And it will be part of that uh, Christmas festival or holiday festival soon. Um, I'll share some photos of what they had already set up in there. I'm gonna walk to the other side so I can wrap up and look back at the facade and you'll see it very well from there. I think it's a helicopter. Oh, it is. So I'm estimating there are about 20 to 30 visitors here right now. One of the perks of visiting off season, even if you have to put up with some construction, gardeners working, you know, they're doing all the work they couldn't do during the busy tourist season this summer doesn't bother me at all. Perk, no lines. So here's the main entrance I was telling you about. People would have gone through the gates. There's on the other side of the gates, between the gates and those beautiful oak trees, there's a semi-circular um, courtyard that kind of adds to the elegance of the place when you arrive. And then you turn around, la la, and here it is. So if you've never been to Aze, you have to come. Let me say a quick hello. I'll be the lady with the red nose. Voila, friends. Good to see you, sort of, kind of. I don't see you, but you see me, hopefully, and hear me too. <laughs> Thank you for joining me today for this, uh, for this impromptu uh, tour. Um, uh, there is another event scheduled on Friday, on Friday at 5, at 6 p.m. Uh, France time. I'm going to take you to my city and tour for a kickoff of the holiday season. Um, there's a big Christmas tree they bring in every year. They couldn't do that, of course, in 2020, so everybody's really waiting for this. The tree came in last week. They're going to trim it and then they're going to turn on the lights and right outside the beautiful tour city hall and this will be the start of the holiday season so i'll try and share some street vibes with you it'll be here on facebook live at 6 p.m on friday so don't miss it and let your friends know as well all right one last peek at Aze, this beautiful chateau and i will be seeing you soon a bientôt, mes amis.